Welcome to Power System Analysis using ETAP. In this lecture, we are going to introduce the concepts of IC60909 short circuit standard. This is the most commonly used standard in the industry. So, let us discuss some common terms, uh, important terms for the IC60909 standard. The four common terms which will be commonly used are initial symmetrical short circuit current, this is the maximum current which you can have the maximum rms value of the short circuit current at the zero value instant uh, which means that as soon as the fault is started on the system the short circuit current uh, gotten at that point is known as initial symmetrical short circuit current whereas peak short circuit current ip is the maximum possible instantaneous value symmetrical short circuit breaking current is the instant of the separation of first pole of the switching device so the short circuit current at the point where breaker or the switching device will open its or part its contact so the current at that moment will be known as symmetrical short circuit breaking current whereas steady state short circuit current is the rms value of the short circuit current which remains after the decay of transient phenomena so whenever when everything has settled down the value of short circuit current will be known as steady state short circuit current so the calculation method so initial symmetrical short circuit current can be calculated as i double dash k is equal to c of u n divided by under, under root 3 z of k where z of k is the total thevenian impedance or the total impedance behind the fault it is the same thing uh, or the equivalent impedance at the fault location. So this is the same thing as which we did for the uh, uh, hand calculation. So uh, similarly, this ZK is calculated, whereas C is the factor. This factor will be discussed in detail uh, in uh, next lectures. But uh, IC60909 tells you that you have to use a certain amount of uh, certain value of this factor in order to get the most conservative current. For instance, we know that V is equal to IR or I is equal to V by R. So where V is the base voltage at the point where short circuit has to be calculated. But for now, if we increase the value of V, we will get the maximum current because V divided by, we have V divided by Z. So this is the same thing. So by increasing the C factor to a certain maximum value, we can increase the value of short circuit current. Peak short circuit current calculation. The peak short circuit current is calculated by IP is equal to under root 2 K I double dash of K. So whatever is the short circuit current value, we divide by, uh, we multiply it by under root 2 and then multiply it by k and where k is the function of system rx ratio at the fault calculation. So now talking about x by r, x by r for peak current can be calculated with three different methods. Uh, for the method A, uh, what do we do in method A? The uniform ratio of x by r in calculating the short circuit current. So we use uniform ratio of x by r whereas in method B, we use x by r ratio at the short circuit location and calculating the short circuit current. So whatever is the x by r at the point of fault, fault, this is the x by r we take. Whereas method C using equivalent frequency in calculating the peak current. So this is how you can use different methods for calculating short circuit current. But usually method B is used. Method B is the most common type of method which is used. Similarly, if you want to get more conservative result, it is good to include no motor decay. So without no motor decay, what will happen is that when the DC component of the short circuit current usually is decayed with the help of a in the form of an exponential form. This we will see in the later uh, stage that how this decay is there. But if you do not include this decay, you are going to get more conservative value. But if you include the uh, decay due to motor, then surely you are going to get less conservative value when calculating breaking short circuit. 
so we were discussing the methods so the uh, k factor method so method a is the uniform r by x the value of the k factor is determined from taking the smallest ratio of r by x of all the branches of the network only the branches that contain a total of 80 percent of the current at the nominal voltage corresponding to the short circuit location are included branches may be series combination of several elements so method b r by x ratio at the short circuit location the value of the k factor is determined by multiplying the k factor by a safe, safety factor of 1.15 which covers the inaccuracies used after obtaining the r by x from a network reduction with complex impedances so in order to make it more conservative and taking care of error we include an additional factor of 1.55 uh, 1.15 method c equivalent frequency the value of the k factor is calculated using a frequency altered r by x r by x is calculated at a lower frequency and then multiply by uh, multiplied by a frequency dependent multiplying factor so you can use any method but as i told you before method b is the most commonly used method so the symmetrical short circuit current breaking calculation so now when we talk about breaking this is the point where the contact of the circuit breaker or your switching device is going to part or going to open. So, the, we, why we are interested in this uh, current? Because we are interested. This will be the point where uh, shorts, where your switch gear or your circuit breaker will open the uh, contact. So, we need to know what is the exact, what will be the exact current at that point when the circuit breaker will be opening its opening itself so for a far from generator fault the symmetrical short circuit breaking is equal to the initial short circuit current so if you have a far from fault so what is what do we mean by far from, uh, from fault so if we are talking about our distribution location or we are talking about a industrial location where there is no generator close to it you are far away from the power plant or far away from all the uh, generation which is available in the system so in this case your ib will be equal to i double dash of k but for a near to fault uh, near to generator fault but uh, when this will come into play when you have generation within your plant so if you are talking about an industrial network which has some kind of local generation or co-generation or there is a power plant very close to uh, this industrial network then in this case this will be uh, an example of a near to generator fault so for a near to generator fault ib is obtained by combining contributions from each uh, each individual machine ib for different type of machine is calculated using the following formula where ib will be equal to either micro i double dash of k for synchronous machines and micro q i double dash of k for asynchronous machine where mu and q are the factors that account for decay so what are they they are the functions of the ratio of minimum time delay and the ratio of machines initial short circuit current to its rated value as well as real power per, per pair of poles of asynchronous machines so iec standard allows you to include or exclude ac decay effect from asynchronous machines in the calculation so usually we do not have asynchronous machines in our system so we can exclude it so it depends totally depends on you if you want to uh, calculate this is uh, calculate this uh, decay for the asynchronous machines or not so this is totally dependent upon the study engineer secondly there is going to be a certain dc component into this so why this dc component is uh, coming into the system there is very simple reason for this dc component as you will see that your entire system is a combination of r and x and most of the system component is x x is usually in a larger value as compared to x so what happens when a current flows through a inductor so this change when this huge current uh, flows through a, a conductor usually this change does not come quickly uh, in the inductor this change of the magnetic field does not come very quickly so due to this uh, change uh, slow or a uh, slow change in uh, AC, uh, dc uh, this uh, change 
what we have uh, what we happen to get is a dc component in the system so the dc component of the short circuit current for the minimum uh, delay time of a protective device is calculated based on initial short circuit current and x by r ratio and what will this depend on this will depend upon the x by r ratio so if you have lower x by r the decay will be less so if you have higher x by r the decay will be more and how it is calculated it is calculated as uh, it is uh, calculated by multiplying your i double dash k initial short circuit current by the exponential of x by r so x by r play x by r will play a very important role when identifying dc component of the short circuit calculation and here f is the system frequency so if you are talking about a 60 hertz system then f is going to be 60 if you are talking about a 50 hertz system f is going to be 50 with t minimum is the minimum delay time of the protective device under concern so what do we mean the uh, minimum delay time this is the time which is the minimum possible time in which the circuit breaker can open its poles or it can uh, break its contacts and x by r is the value uh, uh, at the faulted bus so now the c component of fault current close to generator as we said that when we are going to have fault close to generator so what happens when a fault comes close to generator so here if you see for a fault close to generator ac component will decay as shown in the figure so from the ic standard and from the actual system also what we see is that when we have a, a fault close to the generator bus there is a change of impedance in the system so how this impedance change this impedance change in three stages so first initial is known as the x double dash t or sub transient reactance so due to this when this transient phenomena happens when the short circuit comes uh, uh, is uh, uh, initiated close to the generator bus a uh, transient phenomena happens and in this transient phenomena the impedance of the generator changes with respect to time and for the first few cycles, the impedance is known as the subtransient reactance and the current calculated at this uh, moment will be the highest because the impedance is the lowest at this point. So here, uh, this is shown as I and double dash T. So this is the subtransient current. It will be equal to your uh, voltage at that point divided by the subtransient reactance. Similarly, after few cycles, the generator is going to enter into a transient phase. In this transient phase, the current will be limited by x t dash and ultimately after many cycles the current is going to be limited by transient uh, uh, synchronous reactance or steady state reactance which is given by x t so whenever you are modeling uh, so from here what we came to know is that whenever we will be modeling our generator in the system for the short circuit calculation we need to provide three kind of impedances the subtransient reactance the transient reactance and the synchronous reactance and here from here uh, are both the things so if you see here we, what we have is this is this is your ac current which is flowing through the system and this is the dc component which depends upon x by r value and wherever you are going to part the contact so this value is decaying so the longer the time the breaker will take to contact uh, to part the contact the lower will be the dc component or in other words the lower will be the breaking current of the breaker and this is shown for a single breaker see how the current is changing for the first cycle its value is very high because it is restricted only by the subtransient reactants but as on after few cycles you see that the current has reduced and it has been reduced uh, because now it is being limited by the subtransient reactants uh, transient reactants only and here after many cycles the current has come to the steady state value because it is being limited by the synchronous reactants only however if you go far away from the generator so uh, in this case your subtransient reactance will not be uh, will become negligible because you are far away from the system so hence any change in x double dash t to x t will not have a big impact in a net total x since ac component of the fault at a bus does not decay so if you so if your total reactance of the system at the point of fault 
is much greater than x t dash then in this case you are not going to see this decay and you are going to end up with a short circuit current which is continued or of the same value so this is exactly what is going to happen in our industrial network because an industrial network the generator or the power plants are usually far away from the industrial uh, uh, location because when we talk about an any in industrial location we are talking about something which is towards the distribution side or the transmission side of the system so in this case uh, this uh, component will not have a major impact but if you have a generator within your facility within your industrial network then surely you will have this impact of x double d dash conversion of uh, current from x uh, d double dash to x t dash or from sub transient reactance to transient reactance so we also talked about the uh, dc component and as we said that the decay of the dc component will depend upon r by x value so how do you get this x by r value or r by x value this is simple so when you calculate this um, uh, z at the point of fault so what what is that that is a combination of r and x so you simply divide x value by r value and you get this ratio known as x by r and what do we call it uh, in uh, short circuit uh, uh, phenomena uh, we uh, uh, display it by value tau and tau is equal to l by r or x by r and tau is equal to x by r divided by omega and the dc decay uh, component is given by idc or the dc current at time t is equal to idc t is equal uh, idc at t is equal to zero, that is the initial short circuit multiplied by e raised to power minus t by tau. So by changing the value of tau, by changing the value of x by r, my DC component is going to change. And for the generator, DC decay is based on TA of the generator, where TA is the armature DC current, a short circuit time given in seconds, and if TA is given by the vendor as 0.3 second, then for 50 hertz generator omega t a or omega tau will be equal to x double d dash by r is equal to 0 0.3 into 3.0 is equal to 94 and please note that an e tap x double d dash by r value needs to be entered not tau so whenever we give this x double d dash value by r for a generator tau will be calculated automatically by the e tap so this is how we calculate the so now at the end what we'll be needing now my short circuit current is a combination of ac a symmetrical ac component and the decaying dc component so with these two values i am going to introduce or ic uh, 60909 introduces a concept of asymmetrical breaking fault current and what does ac uh, asymmetrical fault current means asymmetrical fault current is the uh, combination of both symmetrical current plus dc current and this value is going to change with respect to the time where breaker is parting its contact 